Welcome to this Wise Owl tutorial on getting started with Power Pivot. It's the fourth in a series of, series of tutorials on the Power Business Intelligence tools within Excel 2013. Here's what you'll learn in the, this tutorial. We'll start by looking at how to enable the Power Pivot add-in, and then go on to look at how to get the Make a Mammal database, which is used not only for this tutorial, but all the ones which follow it in the series. So it's well worth taking some time to follow the steps in this stage of the tutorial. We'll then look at how to import data into Power Pivot from SQL Server. And then for those who don't have SQL Server, we'll look at how to do the same thing using Excel. And finally, we'll have a look at how to create basic pivot tables within Power Pivot. So let's get started. In order to be able to use Power Pivot, you need to first check that you have the right version of Excel installed and that you have Power Pivot enabled. I quite clearly don't because there's no Power Pivot tab on the ribbon up here. To check the version of Excel, you can choose File from the menu and then go to Account. You can see I'm using Office 365 Pro Plus. You'll need to be using something similar, either that or Excel 2013 Professional Plus. Now that I know I've got the right version, I should automatically have Power Pivot enabled. Unlike Power Query, it should automatically be installed as part of Excel, so all I need to do is find it. I can do that by choosing File from the menu going to Options, and on the Add-ins button on the left-hand side, I can go to my Excel Add-ins and choose to look at Com Add-ins instead. I can then click on the Go button, and what it will do is display a list of Com Add-ins that I could enable. There's Power Pivot, and while I'm at it, I might as well enable Power Map and Power View as well. I can then choose OK, and immediately the Power Pivot tab appears on the ribbon, ready to be used. Before you can start using Power Pivot, you need to download the data on which your pivot tables will be based. You can do this in one of two formats, SQL Server or Excel, and we'll take a look shortly on how to do either. The SQL Server database, when imported, will look like this. It's called MAM, it stands for Make a Mammal, and the idea is that there's a chain of shops selling products, fluffy bears and things like that. It's loosely modelled on Build a Bear, but without any of the sophistication of that. It's about the right level of complexity to teach Power Pivot. So, for example, there's a table of transactions, which is when somebody goes into a store and buys a product. There's a table of the products they buy. There's a table of the stores they shop in, and so on. And we'll be looking at that in much more detail later. The Excel workbook will look similar, but here all the tables are in different worksheets. You can import either of them from the WiseHour website. The thing to do is go to wiseowl.co.uk, go to Resources and choose Blogs. If you then expand the Microsoft Office category, you'll see within it there's a category called Power BI Excel 2013. And if you expand that, you'll see there's a link to useful links and downloads for our video tutorials on Power BI applications. If I click on that, I can then scroll down, and underneath the Make a Mammal database download, I've got two links. I can either, either get at the SQL Server script or the Excel workbook. Now the Excel workbook is pretty straightforward. It just gives you a zip file which you can then extract and load into Excel. So we'll have a look at the SQL Server script. If I click on this link, I can then choose to save the file, which has happened, and you should find it's gone into your default folder. There it is. It's called d3.zip, although that name will actually change over time. What I can then do is double click on that. It gives me a file called generate mam database.sql. And what I'll do is extract that to a folder. I'll actually extract it to the same folder it came from, AJB files, AJB being my initials. And there's the file. Here's how to run it in SQL Server. What you need to do is go into SQL Server Management Studio. You can do that by clicking on the start button, choosing programs, and going to the version of SQL Server that you want to use. I've tested the script on 2008 Release 2, 2012, and 2014, and they all work. So I'll use 2012 just for a change. I need to go into SQL Server Management Studio, and then having done that, you need to connect to the database which you want to use. Now, mine is called Humph backslash SQL 2012, and I'm using default authentication, so I can just click on the Connect button, and it will take me straight in. You can see if I have a look at my database, 
databases. I've already got one called MAM. I'm actually going to delete that by right clicking on it and choosing to uh, delete it so that I can prove that the script works. What you now need to do is to open up the script. You can do that by choosing File from the menu, choosing Open and choosing File. I can scroll down and find my script. There it is, Generate MAM Database. Choose to open it and it will produce a fairly long script which will generate the database. There's not much point telling you a great deal about how it works, but what I would say is you will need the execution rights to create tables and databases on your server. So it may be that you need to give this as a task for your IT department to do. What you should be able to do then is to click on the execute button. And if all goes well, it will run the script. It takes a while to run because it's adding about 40,000 transactions and about a thousand stores and much else besides. But eventually it will say query executed successfully it may take a bit longer because I've got a reasonably fast machine. Disconcertingly, your database doesn't appear on the left-hand side, but that's because, as so often in SQL Server Management Studio, you need to refresh. So if you right-click on Databases and choose Refresh, the MAM database will appear. You can then expand that to look at the tables within it, and you should see you have all the tables as shown on screen here. And this is the database which we'll be using not only for Power Pivot, but also for Power View and for Power Map. So it's well worth taking the time to go through these steps. If you have the choice between SQL Server and Excel, I'd strongly recommend you choose SQL Server. There's two reasons for that. One is all of the examples throughout this tutorials and this series of tutorials will assume using SQL Server. And the other is the SQL Server will run more quickly and more efficiently anyway. So now that we've got our data in SQL Server or an Excel workbook, it's time to use Power Pivot to create a pivot table based upon it. To go into Power Pivot, you click on the Power Pivot tab on the ribbon. What you then do is click on the Manage button, and that will take you into a completely different application. If I want to return to Excel, I can click on this link or little icon at the top left, and that will take me back to Excel. To go back into Power Pivot, I can click on the Manage button. What I now need to do within Power Pivot is to get information from another data source. I'll start with showing SQL Server. To do that, I can choose to get information from a database. I can choose the database format, which is SQL Server, and then I can choose my server name. Now I'm going to type in full stop, which means a reference to my local machine, backslash, and then SQL 2012, which is actually a named instance of SQL Server on my machine. It's important to stress you will type in something completely different. I'm using Windows Authentication, you may not be, and I can click on the drop arrow and choose the MAM database to link to. I can then choose Next to go on to the next stage of the wizard, which asks me whether I want to choose from a list of tables and views or whether I want to write a query. I'll always want to do the first thing, so you can just choose Next to go on to the next stage. And what I'm going to do to make things simple is just import three or four tables. So I'll import the animal table, the product table, the species table, and the transaction table. I'll show much more about this dialog box in the next tutorial in this series. For the moment, let's just choose finish, and it will bring in the four tables. It's transferred the rows into my spreadsheet, or into my Power Pivot data model, I should say. It's important to realize that. If I then choose Close, it will give me each of the four tables across the bottom. But I can also switch to Diagram View, either by clicking on this button, which is easy, or by using the rather, these rather tiny buttons at the top, excuse me, the bottom right corner of the screen, which is more difficult. So I'll go into Diagram View, and what it will do is show me that it's linked my four tables together using the underlying relationships in my SQL Server database. So that's how you can bring information in from SQL Server. What we'll do at the end of this tutorial is look at how to create a pivot table based upon it. But let's take a brief digression now and look at how we could have brought the same data in using an Excel workbook. To get information in from an Excel workbook will be pretty much the same procedure as it was for SQL Server to begin with. So in a new workbook, I can click on the Power Pivot tab and then click on the Manage button to load up the separate application that is Power Pivot. This time I need to get my information from another data source. 
So I can click on from other sources, and I bet you'd think Excel would be near the top of the list of that, but it's nowhere to be seen. It turns out I have to scroll all the way down to the bottom, and it's actually the penultimate option. I'm not quite sure why Microsoft think it's so unimportant. I can then choose Next to go on to the next stage, and I can choose to the Browse button to find the workbook I created containing all my different tables, and it's actually in the AJB Files folder, and it's called MAM Tables. So I'll double-click on that. It's absolutely vital to tick on the box which says the first row of each table contains the column headers. I can then click on the Next button, and I'll see a list of all my tables in the Excel workbook. I'm going to choose the same ones as I did for SQL Server, that is Animal, Product, Species, and further down the list, Transaction. Again, I'll explain more about this later in a separate tutorial, but for the moment I'll just choose Finish, and again it will import all the data into the Excel workbook. I'll close that down, and it looks like it's done exactly the same as it did for SQL Server. It's created four tables. The difference is in Diagram View. If I go to that, you'll see it hasn't linked the tables together at all, and that's going to make life a bit hard. What I'll need to do is recreate all the relationships in the underlying SQL Server database. And not only that, but I'll have to do it every single time I ever create a new Power Pivot workbook based on the Excel tables. For the moment, I'm just going to do this briefly without explaining too much of the theory of what's going on. The product ID in the transactions table clearly links to the product ID in the product, product table. Likewise, I can link the animal ID between the product and animal tables, and the species ID between the animal and species table. And it will recreate the same diagrams I had before. Don't you just love the little bl blue glowing effect on a relationship in Power Pivot? So what I can now do is go on, I'll just get rid of that horrible blue glowing line, what I can now do is go on to create a pivot table in Excel in the final part of this tutorial. The final thing I want to do in this tutorial is to create a pivot table based on the data in Power Pivot. This is actually the Excel data I brought in, but it could just as easily be the SQL Server data. Power Pivot is agnostic about where it gets its data from, which is one of its great strengths. Here's how not to do it. If I go into Excel, I can create a pivot table in the standard way by clicking on the Insert tab on the ribbon, ribbon and choosing Pivot Table. But none of this will allow me to connect to Power Pivot Data Model. So instead what I want to do is come out of that, go back into Power Pivot and use this button to create a pivot table instead. When I do that I can choose to create a pivot table. I'll put it on a new worksheet. And what it will do is give me all the, <coughs> excuse me, all the tables <coughs> and columns available in my Power Pivot data model. It looks a bit of a mess, and one of the things we'll address in the next tutorial in this series is how to tidy all this up so it looks neater and easier to understand. For the moment though, I'll just choose a species name from the species table, the quantity from the transactions table, and what you're looking at there is the fact that, for example, for 5104, there were 5,104 sales of birds in the Maker Mammal database in the period in question. What I could then do is to save this information, so I can choose File from the menu, choose Save As. I'm going to store it on my AJB Files folder, and I'm going to call it Excel Data. And the reason I wanted to do that is to show that the file sizes it creates are quite substantial. The SQL data took up 655k, and the Excel data took up 659k. It's not a great deal smaller than the original file containing the workbook data, which was called MAM Tables. And what this proves is that when you create a Power Pivot workbook, it contains the data imported from the data sources. But what's important to realize about this is that if I were to change the data in the underlying SQL Server table or the underlying Excel workbooks, all I would need to do is refresh my data by clicking Refresh All, and it would go back to the original data sources and bring in the latest version of the data. So that's how PowerPoint works in Outline. What we're going to do in the next tutorial in this series is take a much, much longer look at how to create this data model, including selecting only certain records, selecting only certain columns, how to create these relationships, and much more besides. If you like what you've seen and heard so far, why not head over to the WiseR website, where you can find loads more free resources, including these videos, 
some written blogs and tutorials, and even some exercises that you can download to practice your skills. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.